Hey guys, I am Big and Scary. I'm bringing you another StarCraft 2 replay, this time featuring EG Smurf in the bottom left corner, and in the top right you have Jamesy Kins playing the uh, Red Zerg in the top right. Both players are in high masters, uh, I think top 20 seat, something like that, and we are on Cloud Kingdom. Red versus blue tells me it's probably something played on the ladder. Cloud Kingdom, of course, well known for uh, the smaller rush distance just because even though it takes kind of a serpentine pathway, it's still pretty much straight into the uh, opposite player's base. And uh, that can kind of favor the early aggression, especially out of the Zerg. You can see gas going down before anything else on uh, tin supply for James while the first supply depot is going up for the wall. EG wants to make sure that this wall does get up. You can see he's already got some uh, pathways keyed up uh, just to make sure that anything that comes through the shenanigans are spotted. I don't know if EG Smurf is actually a Smurf for Team Evil Genius. If it was, I expected you know to be kind of higher. Uh, but we're going to see because there's going to be some wicked micro coming out of Jamesy Ken as he uh, gets that spawning pool down very early supply. It's a tin pool before any sort of uh, expansion comes out of him. So he's going to have some super early aggression. He's going to have a lot of early zerglings. You can see he did that extractor trick. Get just one early supply, uh, one more probe, one more zergling, just a little bit more pressure. That uh, wall has got to go up. You'll see a lot of players will build the supply depot but not finish it just to complete that wall off to deny the early scouting and also to slow down the early aggression. But it doesn't look like EG Smurf is... Uh, working towards that his barrack is going to go up first thing and if that scv pops over and does complete that wall uh he'll be in good shape but unfortunately it looks like he's got it rallied down he's going to go for an early expansion which is a terrible idea against a zerg that's going uh, pool first he's got the money saved up so yes that expansion is going to go down and it's also going to get scouted almost immediately by the overlord you'll note that neither player sent out a drone or a harvester or an scv or whatever you want to call it to scout the uh, opposite player, this Marine is in the perfect position to uh, take out that Overlord, but it hopefully is going to take refuge in those uh, rocks right above it. Eight Zerglings coming down. Great timing out of James. Uh, you can see cut his queen, delayed it until 18 supplied. A little bit. A little bit of a delay. What's not delayed is these Zerglings. They're coming down, even with the barracks reprodu uh, repositioning on the low ground Smurf is going to get taken pretty much unprepared Two Marines uh, with no further Marines being constructed. Even with this bunker going down on the low ground, it's not going to be enough to repel this. So these Marines uh, immediately fall back to be reinforced by all, uh, pretty much all the SCVs reinforcing the Marines, just providing a meat buffer so they can do damage from the rear of this one almost going down. The, the Zerglings are going to be pushed back, only two remaining from the immediate eight, but a lot of the economic damage has been done, even though it's 11 to 15, those 15, these guys aren't harvesting at all. These SCVs aren't doing anything to make more Marines, and yeah, there's two more coming out because EG had the money saved up, but these SCVs are going to be kept on the back foot, especially with more Zerglings pushing in. EG needs to either decide to can the expansion you can lift that cc pretty easily probably reposition it up here with that uh supply depot there he could make this wall tight uh he needs to get these marines back up on the high ground salvage that bunker and he wouldn't end up losing anything but as things are now his income is absolutely zero and more zerglings are on the way it looks like eg is choosing to do the opposite he's going to reposition his orbital down on the low ground and lose the supply depot and both dual refineries in the end, he's going to actually have lost more, but maybe he's going to try for a push, try to take down all these Marines with that shield wall of the SCVs. More Zerglings coming in. Uh, there's one single Marine in that bunker still doing damage to the Zerglings, forcing them to come back up. But it looks like we can't really see the combat underneath the Orbital Command, but it went poorly with only two SCVs surviving. You can see the Harvester counts now 13 to 9 heavily in James' favor. Even though he cut so many harvesters to begin with, he's grabbing an expansion while continually streaming in Zerglings, keeping that pressure up, which is absolutely appropriate in this situation. Uh, unfortunately, now all the SCVs are positioned on the low ground next to that bunker, so these Zerglings are not going to be as effective as they were. They'll be able to take down the supply depot, but that's about it. Uh, with this bangling nest coming up, uh, they'll be able to stream in from this gap right here. 
and only takes one or two seconds to blow up all these SCVs. If we can see another major hit from the Banelings, then we can definitely see this go heavily to James. These six Banelings that are morphing in right now, basically, if they can make it into the base, that's game over. These SCVs, they'll go down in one one or two hits from the Banelings that are just now popping. Unfortunately, there's a barracks in the way for James, so he's going to have to work his way through that. Uh, it looks like with only a handful of Marines there to defend, this barracks is going to go down, open up for the Banelings, some good micro out of James, preventing them from blowing up on the building. They stream in, the Marines fall back, but oh, massive hit from the Banelings. Still 13 to 9. Uh, fortunately for EG Smurf, he's got those two orbital commands pulling down twice as many mules as you could expect in this situation, so the mineral income should be around neck and neck. Where Smurf is really hurting is his inability to catch up with infrastructure. James has that Banely nest up. We'll probably see a Lair or a Roach Warren. Another tech switch. Uh, roaches would be excellent in this situation just because of their range. They'd be able to batter, batter down these buildings without exposing themselves to the Marine fire. And Marines are pretty much the only thing that Smurf can wield right now. Uh, yeah, he's got two bunkers, one on either side, and those bunkers are going to be excellent against continued Zergling aggression, but you can look at the production tab and see that James has staved off on the production of any units right now, except for drones and queens, getting back into the tech path, trying to stay one step ahead of Smurf now that he knows he has the uh, advantage. That's a pretty good call. As the aggression kind of dwindles off, I expect Smurf to reposition one of these orbitals to take back his main get back that mineral income, uh, begin to saturate it again. He's really got to try for some sort of desperation play. Maybe he'll go for some cloaked banshees if he can buy enough time. Uh, and we can see a factory is being produced on the in back in the, the main, way away from where any o overlords might come in to scout it. That's a good call. Factories, you, you'll need to get a factory regardless of what tech path he chooses to go. It, it might be Hellions just for some harass. It might be... Uh, a single medevac to do a drop play to see if he can do some economic damage also but uh, one way or another he really needs to do something fast and uh, prevent james from getting even farther ahead in the economy a third is coming up for james once that pops we can expect the income tab which already is heavily favoring the zerg to further skyrocket away from him there's the lair tech going down for james uh i I wonder what he's going to do once he gets that lair. Personally, Mutalisks would be an excellent choice for this. This whole cramped place, there's no engineering bay. He's got this overlord to spot to make sure that there's no missile turrets up. And with everything so crowded in there, the Mutas will be able to do quite a lot of damage. Um, there's the Spire, so that is what he's going for. Another excellent choice would have been uh, Hydras and Roaches. The Hydras and Roaches both having very far distant attacks, which would uh, help him a great deal against any anything except for siege tanks and right now with these two factories pumping out hellions with the uh, hellion infernal pre igniter i don't expect to see any siege tanks we don't see a starport going down so it looks like he is going heavily towards the hellions in fact with three factories we can pretty much assume that a hellion harass is on the horizon that pre igniters will do excellent damage against the mass of zerglings that James has on the field right now, but unfortunately Hellions will do significant, significantly less damage to Mutalisks on a part that, you know, they can't hit them. They can't do damage to them. That'd be bad. Uh, this wall off's a great idea. Two bunkers, or barracks, and with a third one being positioned where it is, uh, it'll be able to make the Marines on the, on the backside to punish any Zerglings that are poking at it, but a lot of Zerglings pulling in, and there's really only four Marines. Oh no, there's eight. Oh, so he had those, both of those bunkers totally filled up. Yeah, that, that'll push back those Zerglings. They might morph into Banelings, come in and burst down that wall, but as things are now, I think uh, James is just waiting for these Mutas to pop out. He's got six on the way. Smurf taking the moment of respite to uh, re-saturate that main, catch back up on the economy. And also waiting for that critical number of Hellions. Actually, with six, he's probably good to go. Seven, yeah, he could he could definitely do a lot of damage. He's seen that the only thing right now on the field are Zerglings. Uh, these Hellions will have no problem with quickly getting into the main, doing a lot of damage. He suspects probably heavily that there's not a lot of uh, static defenses in the area. We can see a missile turret starting to be built. There's already one down in the main. 
Uh, I'm not sure if James can see that or not. Can he? No, he cannot. So he doesn't know what's uh, awaiting his mutus. They're coming in. They meet up with one. Fortunately, they were, could take it down, but another one's in the area, lucky for Smurf, kind of uh, negating their ability to harass. And then with all those Marines out on the field already, they're going to be able to push those back and resecure that mineral line and get, get Smurf the money he desperately needs. At the same time, he's come out with just a lot of Hellions. Look at that, 12 Hellions coming in, immediately roasting the drones. No reaction at all from James. He's uh, not pulling these probes at all, just letting them take the full damage. The queen does go down. Uh, Harvester count is still heavily favoring James, but with Smurf being a Terran, his mules are going to make it, so that's a pretty much an even gap. Yeah, there's more gas income from James, but uh, the damage has been done quite a bit, and there's a lot of healthy Hellions left. Uh, they're streaming back in, take out quite a lot, of harvesters finally going down to the mutas but uh, that used to be a 20 harvester count differential and now there's 39 to 30 that's uh that's a massive hit not enough damage he needs to do one more uh just as successful raid and it looks like he's ramping up to do that again um with those hellions there they go streaming out unfortunately now that james knows what to expect he might reconsider using these mutas as pure uh, aggressors and as defensive units instead the overlord did scout those hellions he knows which way they're heading these mutas are going to position themselves perfectly to intercept them a uh, nice nice spread with all the reinforcing mutas double checks to make sure they hadn't beat him the uh, hellions unfortunately going to fly directly into it they're not going to be able to do any damage they're going to get picked off by these mutas before they really succeed in getting into that probe line uh, one or two does go down. A couple of banelings deal with the rest of them. And as we can see, four more mutas on the way. This muta ball is getting even more intimidating. At this point, so many mutas are on the field, they're going to be able to 1A into this area, take down all the missile turrets and um, marines. On the production tab, we can see two Thors, which is an excellent answer to a mass of mutas this size. Their AoE air damage is going to be devastating to that bundle. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about just those four Hellions. Yeah, they're going to be able to one-shot drones if they can get in there, but I think James knows about that sort of aggression, and I can expect to see a couple of uh, either spore crawlers or roaches. We have ten on the way. Both of those heavily armored units are going to be a good answer to the light damage that Smurf's Hellions can do. Another raid, um, the Harvester count has climbed back up to where it was before with the three base versus two base. We can see that the income is heavily favoring Zerg, but every moment that those Hellions bought, bought uh, Smurf enough time to get out two more two Thors, and the other two Thors are halfway done already. Uh, if he can get all four of them out and one or two volleys off on these, marine, uh, these Mutas, then that cluster can go down, and that can be a heavy hit to James. James spots or suspects those Thors, decides to come down into the more heavily saturated natural and take down all the missile turrets uh, instead of dealing damage to the SCVs and that gives the Thors enough time to reposition, come down here and do a lot of damage to that ball. don't think many of them went down. The uh, resources lost tab still is in James' favor, but he does know that the uh, Thors are out and those Thors are going to be able to do a lot of damage to those mutas if they decide to continue to press the aggression. 17 more roaches coming out. I wonder where those roaches are hanging out. Uh, but once those roaches do get on the field and reach that critical number, they're going to be able to batter down this ramp, this uh, wall that Smurf has constructed, and keep Smurf contained long enough for that fourth to go up. And uh, just James is quickly approaching the maxed out point. So I think Smurf knows that he needs to do something. He needs to make something happen. He's going to push out with Thors and Marines. Plenty of Hellions to support them, so the Zerglings are pretty much going to be useless. It's really going to come down to how many Roaches James is capable of fielding and uh, if he can protect these bases. The fourth is definitely going to go down uh, as long as the Mutas play it safe and meet up with the Roaches and not try to take out the Thor on their own. They should be okay. One Thor does get caught unsupported and it goes down, but at the same time a couple of Mutas get taken down just because of the anti-air 
capabilities of that Thor. Four more Thors coming up. The uh, Hellions basically doing no damage, but quite a lot of roaches battering them down. 40 roaches to the, just the five Thors. The Hellions fall almost like they're not even there. The uh, Muta's taking a lot of anti-air damage, but the Thors are eventually going down just against the superior numbers. E.G. GG's out. Uh, he didn't have a lot left that he could do. Um, saturation was down on his main, and the natural was starting to get mined out. That was basically the last desperation play that he had. He did a lot of damage with those Hellions. That was definitely the right answer, just to bounce back to it. If he had gone the uh, the cloaked Banshee route, he would have run into the Spire, which was getting finished at about the same time. Lair was already up. Yeah, there wasn't an Evo Chamber for detection or anything like that, but an Overlord could have morphed. So that was the right decision, and he definitely did a lot of damage to it. Uh, the Thors, great call to take out the Mutas, but he just didn't have enough supporting units. The Hellions didn't do anything against the Roaches, uh, which was a good tech choice by James. If James had stuck with the Ling Muta, which you commonly see, then this would have played out radically differently. The Hellions would have dealt with the Lings with great ease, and the uh, Mutas would have been absolutely ravaged by the Thors, but this tech choice by James really sealed the deal, the roaches, and that's really due to the successful scouting by this overlord never getting noticed, and then the mutas constantly doing harassment inside the base, seeing that the Thors were up. That's a good call. I really appreciate, uh, I guess, E.G. Spurf did not post this. Probably James posted this. James, I appreciate you posting this. This is a great game. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching this. If you have a comment for me, you could leave a comment here or at Reddit. Or if you have a game you want me to post, you could PM me. I would love to cast it. Uh, one way or another, I will see you guys later. I am big and scary. Bye.